Archer Milton Huntington was a wealthy philanthropist, art collector, and founder of the Hispanic Society of America in New York City. In 1921, he met artist Anna Von Hyatt and commissioned her to create a medal for his library and museum. Already a well-established sculptor, Anna had exhibited her work in New York and abroad. Anna Hyatt Huntington was a very renowned artist uh, prior to her marriage to Archer Huntington. He was a philanthropist and they uh, worked together in New York before they got married. And at the time, she was one of the most successful women in the country by her earnings. Archer Huntington's family fortune from the railroad industry was vast, but Anna's successful art career made her financially independent. In 1915, Anna was listed as only one of 10 women in America earning more than $50,000 a year. Her talent as a sculptor was exceptional. Anna Hyatt Huntington was a, a barrier breaker herself with some of her early monumental pieces such as Joan of Arc that was commissioned for New York City. That was the first uh, sculpture placed in New York of a female subject by a female sculptor. And it also was the first to really show Joan of Arc in the proper period armor. Anna did a lot of historical research in order to get all of that correct. And that, that was something that she always did. Anna's study of anatomy was meticulous and she had a gift for bringing animals to life, especially horses. Her expertise was figurative sculpture. She was, they call an animalier. She uh, focused on realistic sculptures of animals. In 1927, Anna was diagnosed with tuberculosis, a condition that would profoundly affect her career and life. She did go to a sanitarium in Switzerland for what was considered a cure at that time, but she was never truly free of the disease. And she had to be very careful not to overextend herself. She did everything in moderation, and she was disciplined. While looking for a winter home with a climate more suitable for her condition, the Huntingtons discovered Brook Green. We do know that what most likely brought Archer and Anna Huntington here was an advertisement in the New York Times. This had been a, a hunt club and the stock market crash in 1929 necessitated the sale of the property. They came to visit, they docked in Georgetown and then came in a small boat up the Waccamaw River because that was the only way to get here in those days by river. They were looking for a place where she could sculpt and get better weather, and um, they fell in love with this piece of property. So they purchased the property in 1930 and realized how very special it was. She was enchanted. It was so different from her native Cambridge, Massachusetts. That evening after her first visit here, she wrote a letter to her sister. I must tell you about our one day at Brook Green while it is fresh in my mind. The old garden looked attractive, and a low bush of japonica was in bloom and very lovely. The white sand paths run among the trees, shining like patches of snow among the patches of yellow and green moss. Even the swampland is lovely with the oaks and their long swaying mosses, the lovely cypress, and lots of holly. We are anticipating much pleasure, and it will not be a life of pure idleness, for there is an infinite amount to do here. After purchasing the land, the Huntingtons began working on their vision for America's premier sculpture garden. It would require a tremendous amount of labor. South Carolina's low country, like many places during the 1930s, was feeling the pressure of the Great Depression. The construction of Brook Green Gardens helped stimulate the struggling Georgetown economy, providing jobs, transportation, and electricity. Horticulturalist Frank Green Tarbox Jr. collaborated with Anna Huntington to design the gardens, incorporating what remained from the original landscape 
with many new plants acquired from regional and national sources. While Brook Green Gardens was under construction, Archer went to work building the couple's winter home, known today as Adelaia. He chose a Spanish Revival style for the structure, with stucco walls, red clay tile roofs, and impressive towers that offered panoramic views of the surrounding salt marshes and the Atlantic Ocean. Huntington completed the home in just two years. Today, Adelaia serves as a museum in Huntington Beach State Park. On July 13, 1931, Brook Green Gardens was incorporated as a nonprofit organization, and the following year, it opened to the public. 